Nothing stirs up memories like looking at family photo albums. I'm Deb DeYoung, and during this eight-part series, you'll be invited into the homes and the photo albums of some incredible families, each of them with a unique story about their experience with parenting, all of them from different walks of life, different perspectives, and different ideals. But one common thread weaves its way through all of these stories, parenting with passion. We always hope. We always hope. We'll meet a blended family, raising six children from age 24 to 14 months. Life is it's, it's weird, every day is weird. We're looking at some speech issues with the little one-year-old, and I was reading literature on that, and then we're looking at um, my, Darren is still a dependent of mine at university and we're looking at sort of issues there and, and this is in one evening. While coping with the tragic loss that no parent should ever have to endure, the death of a beloved child. A mother trying to overcome the stigma of being a single parent and struggling to accept the inevitable fact that children grow up. Discipline becomes more challenging but I think it's important for both the child and the parent to remember that you're working as a team. Things change and they get harder. Change to some means undertaking the daunting challenge of moving to a new country in hopes of a better life. And with that, the struggle to adapt to unfamiliar and sometimes ruinous territory. Suddenly a woman finds herself empowered by powers she never had before. Okay. This is the main area of contention here. In less than a year when they come here, in less than two years they find a lot of families are breaking up. And my main worry is when they break up, I don't mind about them, but I do mind about their kids. Because we have a saying in Africa that when two elephants fight, who suffers? It is the grass, because they trample on the grass. So when the husband and wife fight and they separate, the children are not suffering. And it's the children that are feeling the stress in other areas. Olympic gold medalist Silken Lawman thinks kids today are facing trouble down the road from lack of exercise. Now a mother of two, Lawman is on a crusade to bring back unstructured play. The author of Child's Play remembers her own outdoor adventures, limited only by the imagination. You know what I remember about being a kid was the outdoors was our adventure ground. I think I had a really typical childhood, um, Canadian childhood from the perspective of uh, you know, my mom would say, okay, I'll see you at lunchtime. And we would meet with friends and neighbors and while away the hours, I mean, whether it was riding our bikes, whether it was going to play a game of baseball, you know, we just, you know, you'd be on to something and then you'd get a little bored and then you'd be on to something else and you'd be using your imagination, uh, climbing trees, building forts. Dylan, I'm Walter, Dylan. There really isn't a need for an introduction here. Walter Gretzky is a regular visitor at this school, not because his own children attended Brantford's Greenbrier, but because the special education classes here are dear to Walter's heart. His sister Ellen had Down syndrome, and at that time, special children weren't integrated, they were institutionalized. When they got there, they were taking the clothes in, what little clothes they had. My mother asked them broke in English. When you visit on a Saturday, a Sunday, Monday, one of the attendants said, well, you don't have to worry about her now, Mrs. Gretzky. She said, we won't worry, but when do you visit? He said, well, didn't they tell you? You don't visit, you leave her, you forget her about it, you'll be looked after. My mother said, nobody told me that. Go back in there and go get those clothes. She's not staying. She's not staying. She lived with me as long as I live. And she, they, they did come home. Coming home may not always be without sacrifice, but it is a choice. Jim Balsley, co-CEO of Research in Motion, the maker of the world-renowned Blackberry, is a self-confessed sponge for expertise and father of two. In every issue I deal with in life, uh, it's real simple for me. I go find the smartest person on that issue and I ask them what they would do if they were me. You know, and there's lots of cases, but I remember one person who had just become a grandparent and talked about how much they traveled and were away. Um, and they said, uh, you know, I missed it the first time and I'm not gonna miss it the second time and I regret missing it the first time. And, and, he, and they said, don't do it. And I took that as gospel. And so, you know, I make a real effort. Most of my trips are day trips. You know, I'm overnight or I'm out for the day. Barbara Coloroso is an internationally recognized speaker and author of several parenting books. 
According to Coloroso, there are six critical life messages that we should be giving our children every day. One message is, you are listened to. Sounds simple enough, but think about it. Do you really listen to your kids? He has a big zit right in the middle of his face. Uh, and we could say, oh, don't worry, I had 30 when I was your age. That's not listening. Nor is, if you hadn't eaten the french fries and the chocolate, you wouldn't have that zit. No, you put your arm around a kid and say, that's a bummer. I remember what it's like to have a zit right here. It feels like your whole face is aglow. Let's see if we can't get something to cover it up and to clear it up, which says to a kid, I hear you. And what about the reverse? Are the kids listening to us? 14-year-old runner Leah Robinson heard something while on the track of the 2008 Beijing Special Olympics. Cheering the competitors on? Spectators numbering 91,000. I don't hear the crowds, and I think that really helped when I was in Beijing, because um, it just sounded like white noise to me. Um, but actually it was weird, because the only person I heard, and this is gonna sound cheesy, was my dad, <laughs> just screaming Leah. The power of encouragement. There are a number of books on the shelves reminding us of the power of a parent's words. But Craig Kielberger, the child rights activist who started the international charitable organization Free the Children at the tender age of 12, says many of these books are missing something. Parenting with a passion about truly not treating your child as some end product, but treating your child as a caring, compassionate, young, active citizen who will go on to do wonderful things to fulfill his or her unique potential. And for a series to focus on how parents can parent with that passion, that empathy, and that compassion, we need more of that. And there is more. Dr. David Suzuki and his daughter Severin. People often ask me what's the most important thing I've ever done. And I always say my children. The Honorable Jean Augustine. TV personality Jeff Hutchison. Senator Pamela Wallen. My parents gave me everything. Gap Adventure CEO Bruce Poon Tip, recording artist Justin Hines, and of course, all of our incredible families who openly share their stories about parenting with passion. It's brilliant, it's positive, it gets right down to the core values. It's what it's all about, it's what life is all about. So thank you for being a part of this outstanding event and the series is gonna be super successful and you heard it first right here from Mac Poison.